Ladies and gentlemen, we are two minutes away from the beginning of our presentation here on the Duville campus. Just a few minutes from the grand opening of the Health Professions Hub. Good afternoon, everybody. How is everybody feeling today? I called my friend Tom Joles and I said, we need a salubrious day, and he delivered it. My name is John DeShulo from WBBZ TV, your locally owned hometown Me TV station. And we're a part of the production team that is putting this together. And uh, we'll mention some of those other folks who are a part of this in just a second. But on behalf of all of our media friends, I do want to ask, because we have everybody represented here today. Are all of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, ready for today's event? Cameras are rolling, sound is good. I'm getting the thumbs up, that's terrific. Some of our other partners who are helping us here at Duville, number one, uh, are Hale Northeastern, Indigo Productions, uh, Marketing Mayor, the Dry Creek Group, and how about DJ Milk, everybody? It isn't a party unless DJ Milk is in the house. We should mention that Hamrill Amusements is here, a family-run business, the Ritchie family. They're terrific, and they are supplying the rides that are, be, uh, that are free so that after the presentation, the party will continue, along with the food trucks and uh, Wiedner's Chicken, which is all at no charge, courtesy of Duville. And we wouldn't be uh, here if we didn't have our partners with us as well, which include Catholic Health, and we thank them for their support of this great building here today. So we want to thank our VIPs who are in attendance. We want to thank the Duville team that is here, the administrators, the staff, and the students. My daughter is a Duville student, and I'm a proud Duville dad. So I can honestly say that what you're doing in the Western New York community is very, very significant. We have a great event for you today, and we're here to celebrate the opening of this very unique building. But instead of us talking about it, why don't we show you what the hub is all about?
Our dream was to have a building that was filled with members of the community all the time. Our students, our faculty, our staff, and all of the residents that surround the college. We've had so many different voices lend their expertise and input to the building. All levels of the campus, faculty, staff, and students to, to ask, we asked them what could go in this building and they gave us a whole bunch of input. And we narrowed it down to kind of three concepts, uh, care, comprehend, and connect. And that's what we based the rest of the project on, those three elements. For a long time, those of us in health professions and nursing and pharmacy have always talked about bringing services to the community. And so these conversations have gone on for a really long time, but it was really hard to feel like we could get it off the ground. So our mission really is founded in the work of St. Marguerite Duval. Something that strikes me about her and the Grey Nuns was that they were absolutely fearless. And even though there was times that they didn't know who they were going to treat, what the risk was to them in communities with contagious disease, that is very much the the vision of this college then and now is that we are fearless and we step into things that no one has ever done before. I think the opportunity itself was attractive because of the challenge, maybe even a little bit disruptive, but uh, in a good way because it's changing a model that uh, needs to change. This idea and our mission became a moonshot. You know that you're on a moonshot trajectory when people start joining you and supporting that goal, that project, that audacious idea that you have that doesn't seem possible. That's what happened here at Duval on our mission to create the Health Professions Hub. When we started talking about this opportunity, we looked at it as so much more than just being able to provide health care. We re recognize that this is an area that has been underserved. We recognize the fact that there are many immigrant families here. We wanted to be able to help create that vision that Dr. Clemo had to be able to bring in the community into a space and not only provide them with health care, but help them raise themselves up so that they could have a better life. My first job that I got right out of school was working with the youth in, um, in a downtown area in Syracuse. A child that I was working with who was a um, very playful, very joyful child, uh, but had very serious family situations and not having good quality care at home. As it turned out, he had stage four leukemia. Um, he passed after less than two months. And that was probably one of the most devastating things as a young employee that I had ever faced. So I'll never forget Quentin's face, uh, but when I look around this community and see the children that are in need, the elderly that need care, I see his face in so many of them. That is what drives me to be passionate about this particular project. When I was a child, my mom was in an accident during the Civil War back in El Salvador, she um, suffered from a gunshot wound. Knowing that I could lose my mom was just terrifying. Uh, but thankfully, thanks to the doctor that, you know, oversaw the care of my mom and seeing his compassion, his empathy, human care for another person that he did not even know um, really struck me. And I realized at that moment that I wanted to be him. I need to give another child a chance to uh, inspire them to become what they want to do, whether it's in healthcare or anything else. And even though it was a it was a struggle, my focus was always, you know, giving back to the community, giving back to the underserved because I come from that background as well. When I think about what I do every day, I, I don't think it's about a job. For me, it's become a calling. When you can find that in your day-to-day -day life, it changes everything. The experience that's gonna be offered on this campus from the foundational work and then the experiences that students will have by connecting with the community, I think when they're done, they're gonna want more than a job. They're gonna to wanna to have that feeling that you get when you have that opportunity to interact with people at that level. 
Many years ago, the faculty and staff at the college planted this seed, which became our moonshot, to build a health clinic that would serve the west side. And from that seed, the community added some nourishment and we started to design a community center that would truly serve everyone in the most inclusive way that we possibly could. And now we are about to open up this community center that truly will change the future of healthcare education. It will change the lives of people that are served here for healthcare, and it will become a model that can be replicated across the entire country with people that have the passion and commitment to really want to help each other and their communities. It's an incredible place, an incredible place, the hub, and something like this does not happen without commitment, vision, and especially just amazing, amazing foresight. Somebody that is really looking forward for this community. And so with that, I'd like to welcome the individual who is behind it with her team. Would you welcome the president of Duville, Dr. Lori Clevo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, John. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone and thank you for coming to Duville's grand opening of the Health Professions Hub and of course our Black Party. In an to keep this fun, we have a lot of truly amazing experiences planned for you today. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on why we have gathered here today to celebrate this Moonshot project. As many of you know, and we just heard, our foundress, St. Marguerite de Uvel of the Grey Nuns, lived a life dedicated in service to others, especially to those in need of assistance in Montreal, home of the Grey Nuns, where she was asked to overhaul a failing hospital. St. Marguerite's personal mission and that of the Grey Nuns was simple, never refuse to serve. No matter what the need, challenge, risk, or responsibility, the Grey Nuns simply never refused to serve. And it was in this spirit that our moonshot journey for the Health Professions Hub began. Three years ago, the faculty, staff, administrators, and trustees of Duville saw an opportunity. We opened our eyes to the possibility and we collectively decided to refine our future in a way that aligned with the mission of our past. In this process of realizing this shared vision, we stimulated deep engagement support from not only our faculty, staff, and students, but also among our community and the free enterprise alike. That is to say, the moonshot and the purpose behind it catalyzed a genuine passion for action. We have certainly been graced with a broad and deep level of engagement for Duval's Health Professions Hub. In honor of these supporters, I'd like to first and foremost thank our partners who fearlessly stepped in to make this breathtaking project a reality. First, let's recognize Governor Cuomo and New York State for their belief in our project from the outset when they supported us with the largest DASNY grant ever awarded to an institution in Western New York. The five became a cornerstone of our hub. Catholic Health, our partners from the beginning of this journey, will manage a 10,000 square foot state-of-the-art clinic and laboratory serving our neighborhood. Also, a $5 million supporter of our shared mission. 
Leading foundations in our community provided financial support for capital and critical programming that will take place in the building. We would not be here without your generous support, passion to see all people flourish, and for having trust in DeUville to address pressing challenges. These foundations are truly the stewards of our community, and they include Key Bank First Niagara Foundations that sponsored our grand assembly, a common gathering space modeled after the inclusive and annual problem-solving meeting of members of the United Nations, a space of grandeur intended to welcome in and reflect the vibrant diversity of the people of the west side of Buffalo. The Mother Cabrini Foundation that also generously stepped forward to fund construction of the Delish Demonstration Kitchen that provides a home-based training facility for clinic patients to learn how to cook healthy meals. The Mother Cabrini Foundation also sponsored our Thrive Rehabilitation Center that will provide occupational and physical therapies and chiropractic services to patients. Finally, the Mother Cabrini Foundation is supporting our workforce development program located in our Center for Health, Equity, and Innovation, which serves as an entry point for people interested in getting training and hands-on skills to become a healthcare worker. If you have ever thought about working in healthcare, this is the place to begin. The Margaret, <laughs> the Margaret L. Wendt Foundation charitably sponsored construction of the hub and our 20,000 square foot state-of-the-art simulation training center that students and current professionals will train in that will provide a safe learning environment. Several foundations also big-heartedly supported capital, equipment, and programmatic needs of the hub, including the James H. Cumming Foundation, the George Eldon Trust Foundation, the J.M. McDonald Foundation, and the Charles D. individual major donors, many of whom are here with us today, believed in our shared vision for a healthier community, including Roger Hungerford, the Perna family, Cecilia Kohlmeyer, Mary Quisella, Andy Dorn, George Slemmer, Tim Kane, Nora Mario, and Nate Martin, just to name a few of our healthcare hub heroes. To our building team, Mike Tunkey and our good friends at Canon Design, who turned our ideas into concepts, renderings, and construction plans. And to Gary Bickler. And, and to Gary Bickler and his team at RPO Oak Hill, who took those documents and transformed them into a reality, on budget and on time. And thank you to the more than 80 full-time construction workers who never missed a day of work in over a one and a half years of building despite a global pandemic. <laughs> Finally, to our campus community. This moonshot could never have happened without the full support from our Board of Trustees, specifically our former chairs, C.J. Erlob, James Jamel Perkins, and current Chair Joe Cozo. Big thank you for your consistent, unwavering support of this very important vision. And now to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and always enthusiastic student body, your participation in countless ideation retreats, assessments, planning sessions, fundraising events, and team exercises may have at times seemed like obstacles but as we now know, they were really stepping stones for innovation. All of you provided insight, expertise, and knowledge to inform not only the building itself, but the impact it will have to better our community. 
Let's have a big round of applause for all our supporters and partners and their remarkable commitment to Uvel, our city, and our society. I think that the video we just watched did an amazing job of illustrating the shared vision of the hub. The, the, the vision was Uvel's moonshot, and it embodies bold thinking innovation, and promise of positive impact for our future. The hub has been strategically designed and situated in a place to address the critical health inequity of our home, the west side of Buffalo. All of the partners involved have recognized the issues, and we are working hard to make health care access easy, reliable, and comprehensive. It doesn't matter whether you need a specialized physician, chiropractor, physical therapist, occupational therapist, dietitian, physician assistant, pharmacist, nurse or nurse, pra nurse practitioner, we have all of them here for you. And if any of them write you a prescription, we have a pharmacy on site. So there is no more hopping around from place to place simply to get what you need to stay healthy. This is a one-stop shop for health and wellness and Uvel is here for you. In this regard, the Health Professions Hub is providing a new model of holistic patient-centered care. It is remarkably rare to see this diversity of experiencing all working in a single healthcare ecosystem under one single roof. We have a health clinic, a pharmacy, a rehabilitation and wellness gym, a dietetics kitchen, a leading edge simulation center, and a health equity and innovation convention center, all operating together for the benefit of our patients. And it goes without saying that this high degree of interprofessional education will define the next generation of healthcare excellence and its workers. The direction of this moonshot we have taken to create a healthy, thriving community asset that provides inclusive education, patient-centered care, and connects people to solve critical problems is a place of high responsibility. Today, this community, all of us, acknowledge our duty to one another. We gather to thank and express our deepest gratitude for all the people who have made this possible our hearts and our minds are in the spirit of fairness, positive thought, actions, and speech. The Health Professions Hub and all its activities will aid those in distress, bring hope to those in need, offer opportunity for all, and spread health and happiness across our great city and region. Do not forget, we will never refuse to serve. Now that was good timing. <laughs> so to pace. So to pay special tribute to the hub, I would like to invite LaRusha Blakely, who just graduated this May with her Doctorate of Educational Leadership and was the winner of Duval's Poetry Slam competition this spring to join me on stage for a special poetry set presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady LaRush Blakely. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. As we weave together new communities, let us be mindful of the intricacies required to exceed the tingles of thoughtful passions and emit visible change. We must do away with that which causes pain. No, I don't mean correctness with a political twang or acknowledging whose life matters when it is evident that we are not all the same. To heal, we must loosen our embrace on a culture that is historically laced 
with traumas and atrocities, a certifiable disgrace. As we look in remembrance on the dirt that covers past sins from which our great nation stemmed, let us not be overcome by self-inflicted wounds necessary for growth. Instead of falling into historical traps, we must anchor ourselves in lifting one another up out of deeply rooted sorrows, gaining hope for tomorrow. And as the darkness clears, exposure to the light of truth allows seeds of unity to bloom. Enriching the soils of life, erasing cynicism and racism, causing us to be bound together with cords that cannot be broken. Taking a stand is unpopular, yes, but we cannot fear becoming outcasts as a result of taking a knee. Though the scrubbing of past infringements is painful, we must become so fresh and so clean from hatred, whether it is given or received. We take note that none are immune and all suffer the effects of this worldwide sickness. To eradicate our nation's illness, let us pull our resources to end this pandemic. This concept, rarely spoken, is a selfless service. Loving thy neighbor as thyself, the main ingredient to hate's antidote. My prayers are constant and offered fervently that despite the current climate and societal diseases, we take note of nature, mainly the birds and the bees, embracing freedom harmoniously, creating love with intentionality, and let our efforts spread like the embers that could set entire forests aflame, burning within our hearts any branches of disdain, acknowledging that liberty and freedom require like-mindedness to be obtained. From the east and west sides, giving ear to muffled cries of women and children lost in the storms of life. Not to mention we must pay attention and make provisions for the hungry, the hurting, the dying, and the lost. Building an ark, we must lay aside self-absorption which weighs us down in order to stay afloat as we carry our cross fighting the hellish flames of shame from past mistakes. We discard old world views as dross. We are embarking on a journey to a new world, healthily connected to communities of healed human beings. And there we can thrive. So with hearts restored, and eyes on the prize, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, let freedom ring. Thank you so much, Dr. Blakely. Those are true words from your heart. Projects like the Hub require support in so many ways. And that support starts right here, down the street at City Hall. Throughout his time in office, Mayor Byron Brown has seen numerous projects come to life on the Duval campus. And each and every time he is standing firm in his support of our work. The mayor and his entire team at City Hall has been a tremendous support throughout the design, construction, and now celebration of the hub. You were always there to take our call when we needed assistance or help. We are thankful to your service, to our community, and especially to the Uville College. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming and thanking the mayor of the city of Buffalo, Mayor Byron Brown. Thank you very much, Dr. Clemo. Wow. What a meaningful, exciting, and fun day in the city of Buffalo, in particular in Buffalo's west side, where Duville celebrates another major milestone. While world-famous daredevil Nick Walenda walks the high wire across campus, one of Nick's mantras is, never give up. Today, I congratulate Duville President Dr. Lori Clemo and her leadership team for pushing forward during the COVID-19 global health pandemic and completing this new $27 million state-of-the-art health professions hub. This is deemed an essential healthcare project. 
during the construction, construction stayed on track, even during the pandemic, as Dr. Clemo said. It took hard work, persistence, but today, residents of Buffalo's West Side and students in this community have a new health facility in the heart of this neighborhood. I want to offer my deepest and most hearty congratulations to everyone involved. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Brown, for your leadership and your unending support of the Health Professions Hub. When I think back on when we announced our plans to build the Health Professions Hub and our conversations with our elected officials, one might argue that there was no one more knowledgeable and passionate about the health care issues facing our community than Senator Sean Ryan. He embraced our idea from the first conversation in my office and now has Un, and has not wavered from his efforts to support our goals in our community. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Sean Ryan. What another great day here at Duville. Sometimes you come to these events and you start thinking about legislation you might want to pass. And today I'm thinking about mufflers on jets. I think that's a good idea. So we worked hard to make sure that New York State came in early on this project uh, to show to the rest of the community that this was for real and that we have uh, broad support. So I was in the assembly at that time and I worked super hard with my counterpart from the Senate at that time, uh, Senator Kennedy and we made sure that the first HECAP grant uh, came in. And these are the type of projects you speak of and you think, well, is this ever going to come to fruition? This seems like a, like a lift, a lot of vision, and it was the moonshot that the president uh, spoke of. In one of our earlier conversations on this, you know, we talked about the benefits of what we called site-based economic development. You know, you invest in a school, you invest in a hospital because they're not picking up and moving to North Carolina or they're not picking up and moving to China. They're here for good in our community. But we talked about one of the mismatches is, you know, we have a great health care school in Duville, but West Side kids who need PT or OT, they can't get it here. And if somebody needed to go to pharmacy, even though we had a pharmacy school, the Duville students were going out to provide their clinical work and which also meant no one from the West Side could come in. And we also spoke about the upskilling of West Side residents who are currently in the health care field, but would like that boost up. And the hub takes care of all the things we spoke of. Uh, West Side people will now be able to come get a prescription filled right here. If a child needs PT, they can come right here uh, to get that, that PT. And if a resident needs upskilling, uh, this is the place to go. It is genuinely the hub. And I can't tell you how proud I am of Duville for really continuing to stretch out what's been on their mission for more than a century. And that is, first and foremost, is how to provide health care and how to educate health care professionals. So my hat's off to the team here who got this project done. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ryan, for your support and unwavering support for the hub. When we started this project, we knew that support at the state level is going to be critical. As we were developing our concept and developing our initial plans, we reached out to someone we knew would share our dedication to invest in the health and well-being of our west side and city of Buffalo. Senator Tim Kennedy was that person. He has continually been a strong supporter of Duville. Now we all know he may be a little bit biased since he is an alum and his mother, Mary Catherine Kennedy, works in our Patricia H. Garman School of Nursing. But even with that, Senator Kennedy has always provided us support on any initiative that we have asked him to assist with. 
He believes this will be a positive impact for the city of Buffalo. I would like to ask Senator Tim Kennedy to join me on stage for a few words. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, what a beautiful day we have here, isn't it? I'll tell you, you know, hats off to Dr. Lori Clemo, uh, to her extraordinary team here at Duval College uh, for putting this amazing event together here today. Now, I thought we were in for a show, and we will be, with Nick Valenda walking the high wire, but then she threw in the Blue Angels. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Thank you, Dr. Clemo. Well, as has been mentioned, uh, I am a Duval College graduate, class of 1999, School of Occupational Therapy. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. My mother, when I was accepted to five or six different schools, she said, no, no, you're going to Duval College. And I'll tell you why. Because she went to Duval College. And as a nurse who graduated in 1968, you're going to find her here in the hub today, who she's still practicing by teaching nurses here in our community. And I'll tell you why that's so important. Because 17% of the GDP in Buffalo and Western New York is based on health care. And there's going to be a need for 10,000 more health care workers in our community alone by 2024, just in the next few years. And Duval College's hub is going to be the central point in our entire region for training the next generation of healthcare practitioners all across the healthcare professions. And that is something to celebrate. We are so proud of you, Duval College. In 1908, Duval College was founded, over 110 years ago. It's the only higher education institution around, named after St. Marguerite Duval, who has already been mentioned an 18th century founder of the Grey Nuns in Montreal. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I often think about, because it's my own family heritage, the Irish coming across the Atlantic, fleeing the great hunger and famine in, in the coffin ships and landing in Montreal with disease, they were met by the Grey Nuns, founded by St. Marguerite Duval. And when they went in, when others were fleeing those that were arriving, the Grey Nuns went into serve those, and they died with those that they served of typhoid and other diseases. So Duval College, in the spirit of St. Marguerite Duval, reaching out and always helping others, but leading by example, not just here in Western New York and in New York State, but across the nation, and I would argue North America, with our great Canadian partners, who are able to take advantage of this great educational institution on the west side. Duval is doing it right. The investments we're seeing, the hundreds of millions of dollars that they've invested over the years, a lot of it, my own tuition money from 1999. I'm very proud to see it going to good use, Dr. Clemo. But they're continuing to expand, and there's no question in my mind they're going to continue to grow and to continue to impress and continue to be the anchor tenant for the rebirth of the west side and the entire city of Buffalo and the entire western part of the state. So congratulations to everybody that made this happen today. And I want to recognize all of my colleagues in government, from Mayor Brown to Sean Ryan, my colleague in the Senate, to his great replacement in the Assembly, Jonathan Rivera, who's steeped in the art of public service, especially here on the west side, because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, his father, David Rivera, in the Buffalo Common Council, for working together to get New York State to pay attention to our community and delivering. We are so proud to make this happen, and thank God he gave us this beautiful day to have this wonderful celebration. Congratulations. Senator, we love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for Duval. You are our biggest cheerleader in New York State. Thank you, and I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge 
two other elected officials who have joined us here today. They are no strangers to the West Side and no strangers to the Uville. Our friends from the West Side, please stand so we can recognize you. Buffalo City College Council member representing the Niagara District, Majority Leader David A. Rivera. And his son, another supporter of the West Side and of Duval College, Assembly Member Jonathan Rivera. Thank you for being with us. As I referenced briefly in my comments earlier, the Sisters Health Center at Duval is a key component of the services provided in the hub. When we thought about providing primary care to our community, community we needed to find a partner who believed in our mission of service at their core. And we did not have to look far to find Catholic Health to talk about this concept. From the first leadership conversations with CEO and President Mark Sullivan, please stand so we can acknowledge you. Thank you, Mark. And Joyce, and Joyce Markowitz, Chief Development Officer at Catholic Health. I knew we had found the right partners to take care of the hospital setting, bring it into the community health care setting, where it was so desperately needed. We are so thrilled to have Catholic Health on this journey with us. We thank you for your commitment and support of this project. I could not be happier than to be on this stage with Joyce Markowitz, Catholic Health Chief De Business Development Officer and the UVL alum. Good afternoon. Thank you to everyone that is here today to celebrate the opening of this innovative health professions hub and the state-of-the-art Sisters Hospital Clinic. Once upon a time, a long time ago, I lived on this campus when it consisted of an administration building, student center, two dorms, and a health science building. Back then, I never dreamed that I would be here representing Catholic Health in support of Dr. Clemo and CEO Mark Sullivan's vision of creating healthy communities. This Health Professions Hub is more than just a building. With a clinic, it is a beacon for both students and the community, a place to learn and to educate, a place to heal and to be healed, and a place to gain the confidence and skills that are so important for tomorrow's workforce. It is only fitting that a first-of-its-kind Health Professions Hub would partner with Sisters Hospital, who was the first hospital in Buffalo founded in 1848 by the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul. This partnership between Catholic Health and Duville pays homage to the women religious that came before us who are also committed to serving the communities, caring for the sick, and providing opportunities for education throughout the development of schools and colleges. Their legacy will continue here at the Health Professions Hub and through the healing that will take place at the Sisters Health Clinic. Thank you to Dr. Clemo and Mark Sullivan, President and CEO of Catholic Health, for your vision and your courage to look beyond what we know today towards what we will, can do to shape our communities of the future. Thank you to the Board of Trustees of Duval College, the Catholic Health Board of Directors, and all the associates and voices from the community that provided their time and talents to bring this, con this concept to life. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Mark. I truly believe that this partnership is a force to be reckoned with. We're going to make a difference. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. We are going to open the building. So I'll ask my Vice President of Operations, Nate Martin, to come forward with the key. You don't have the key. Mayor Brown, do you have the key? I don't have the key. Senator Kennedy. Lori. Councilman Rivera. Joyce, you must have the key. Lori, over here. Is that Nick Lawenda? Hey, it's me, Lori. <laughs> Nick. I was I was just in the library and I found a key on the floor. Oh, could you bring it over here? Absolutely. Just give me one second. I guess I'll take the shortcut. 
What's up, you villain Buffalo? You got doing? What a beautiful day you guys have provided for me. The weather could not be better. And how about those blue angels flying over the top? It's always good when you can call on your friends. <laughs> hey, Nick, can you see Niagara Falls from up there? Not yet, maybe soon. <laughs> Yep, actually I can, right through the treetop there. What a great memory, just over nine years ago. In fact, nine years and two days, I had that blessing of an opportunity to become the first person in the world to walk over those falls. Well, Lori, what do you think? I think you're doing pretty good. Take your time, though, Nick. Do you think take you your can, time. Do you think you can meet me halfway so I can hand the key off? I need to get back to the library and do more studying. try to do something right over all this electricity. What's up, Buffalo? Woo! It's always such an honor to be back here in Western New York. This is truly where my career was launched. Of course, my career started a little earlier than that walk over Niagara Falls, but that's really what set my career off to what it's been today. And what a blessing it has been. There'll be a piece of my heart in this area forever. It is, again, again, such an honor. For those of you who don't know my family history, well over 200 years walking on wires. I was about six years old when I first visited Niagara Falls as my parents were performing here in Buffalo, actually, on a shrine circus. And they brought me down, down to Niagara Falls. And I remember at six years old looking across and saying, we need to walk across those. Little did I know, that many years later, that dream of mine would come true. Don't want to lose my balance here. That'd be quite shocking. <laughs> Sorry, that was a dad joke. <laughs> I'm a proud father of three. I have a 24-year-old that is, serves our country as a U.S. Marine. Yeah. Thank you to all of our armed forces. I have a knight, actually just turned 20-year-old, who's currently serving our country. He's based in Belgium in the U.S. Army. And I have a 19-year-old, 18-year-old daughter that is getting ready to go to college for nursing. And I think Dr. Lori is trying to convince her to come here. We signed her last night, don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to do a few more of these walks to pay for the tuition. Unfortunately, when I'm performing in the state of New York, they make me wear this darn thing. 
kind of limits what I can do up here. What, you don't trust me? She's not on the stage anymore. She's just gonna do that. <laughs> just kidding. The last one. Screw it. Thanks. the key. That key? From 1908? No, no, this key that's right attached to it. Oh, there we go. That's the key we need. Thank you, Nick. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Nick, I cannot thank you enough for being here for this milestone moment for Duvo College. And we're going to let Nick say a few words, but before we do that, I'd like to ask my Vice President for Operations, and Interim Chief Mission Officer to join me on stage for a special presentation to Nick Walenda. So when you came to Buffalo a few weeks back to visit the campus and check the site and the walk, we took a couple trips up to the roof. Uh, it was a little scary for me, but I know you were quite calm and you took a laser scope out and you scoped the distance and shouted out 320 feet point to point, library to the hub, which we know now is the longest walk in the city of Buffalo. After you left, I called Lori right away. Lori, you can't believe this meeting we just had. We're up on the roof, having a good time. And uh, we talked through logistics, we, uh, how this might work, what are we gonna do on campus? And then I simply mentioned the distance was 320 feet and I didn't get a response. So I repeated again, Lori, the, you know, did you hear that? 320 feet, are we good? And there was another pause, no response. And then she said, yes, I heard you clearly. 320 feet. And it's more than simply a distance in this case. For those of you who ever GPSed our campus, 320 Porter Avenue, 320. But this year, 320 means even more. And I think that's why she paused. The year 2021 is the 320th anniversary of the birth of St. Marguerite de Uville. Founders of the Grey Nuns, and as we all know, after whom de Uville is named. So we both talked a little more and realized that it was not simply a random idea that we asked you <laughs> to join us. And it was not simply a random decision that Nick made to participate with us to walk the wire. 
Nick was destined to be here at the Uville today, celebrating the opening of our Health Professions Hub. St. Marguerite called you to be with us. And you know why we know that? It's because of your faith, Nick. You talk very openly about your faith and how important it is to you and your family and your team. You embrace it, you showcase it for the world to see. You bring your faith with you every time you walk on the wire, every time you practice and every time you perform. You are fully appreciative of the blessings that God has given you, including your talent to walk the wire and entertain. And by accepting and embracing your talent, your calling, you honor God with what you do. Your faith allows you to push the boundaries where others have not traveled and to conquer the fears that rise up in front of you and not letting anything stop you from celebrating and showcasing your gift. You honor God by passionately following your calling the way you do, serving those around you every day and in many ways never refusing to serve just like us and just like St. Marguerite de Uvo. So in recognition of your life's passion and work, which is laid on the foundation of God and is fueled by your faith, Uville is proud to honor you today by giving you the first ever St. Marguerite de Uville Faith in Action Award presented by the President. Nick, may God continue to bless you, your team, and your family, and know that you will always have a special part in ours. Right here at Duville, at 320 Porter Avenue. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Lori. Wow, what a story. I didn't know that until just now, the 320 and the significance of that. I believe that numbers are very significant in our life. And uh, as Nathan mentioned, faith is so important to me, so important to my family, and it's really so important to each and every one of us. And I am very proud to embody who I am, and I'm not ashamed of who I am. And I think we all need to be more like that. I think we all need to be proud of who we are, and I think we need to accept others. You know, I think this world could use a little more love. And that's really what it comes down to, is loving one another. It's the greatest commandment. Love God, love others. It's pretty simple what our nation, it's really what our world needs right now is more love, yeah. accepting one another's for our differences. And also just showing love to one another. There are so many hurting people in this world that just need love. I was listening to a speaker about three weeks ago and he said, it's easy to love people that smell good, but what about those that don't? It's a great lesson in life, because it is true. It's easy to love our family. Sometimes we get mad at them, but we forgive them and love them. But what about those that are struggling, that are hurting, that are suffering? Those are the ones that need the hug. Those are the ones that we need to show love to. Thank you guys so much again for this opportunity. I truly do love Western New York. I promise you I'm working diligently to bring a permanent something Nick Walenda to this region. I live by those three words, as, as the mayor mentioned never give up, and I won't ever give up on you guys. I promise you that. So thank you. I appreciate you, and I love you guys. I'll answer it afterwards. There you go. Buffalo Bills Stadium is next, he said. You just got to set it up for me. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I love you, and I'll see you in a little bit out here signing autographs. Duville has been amazing in offering a free copy of my latest book, Facing Fear. So please, we're going to form a line soon. I'm going to be here signing them after I meet with the media, and I want to check out the amazing hub building too, so give me a few minutes. Thank you again. All right, and now the moment we've been waiting for. I would like to ask our VIPs in the front row to please join me in front of the stage here, along with... John Rizek, our SGA student government, Affairs President and our mascot Saint. We will now officially open the hub. <laughs> <laughs> 